Okay, as you're getting ready to start your humanities paper, you should have found some evidence. So the big question becomes, what do we do with that evidence? So here's how we're going to take the way that you embed quotes and move them from the way they looked freshman year to the way they should look sophomore year. So first, here's our evidence. The control tactic that I want to show is censorship. And the quote that I've chosen from 1984 is, the most deadly danger was talking in your sleep. So now that you find your quote, what do you do? This should be familiar. We do C-E-C-A. We start with context. So think about what background information your reader needs to know or remember to understand your evidence. So let's think for a second. If this is my evidence, what does somebody need to know about this? This kind of comes out of nowhere. So we'd need to know it's about Winston. We'd need to know it's about Oceania. We would need to know that maybe that the thought police come to get you, that this means that um, people have to worry about what they're saying, not only when they're awake, but also when they're sleeping. All of those things might be important background information to help us understand the quote. So that's your context, background information that the reader needs. Second, of course, is evidence. And evidence for this paper will be either a carefully chosen quotation, and that's any words from the book, or a fact that demonstrates your control tactics, censorship, propaganda, revised history, etc., in a way that supports your thesis. Think about with your uh, evidence that it also includes a quote lead-in or tag. The sentence with the quote in it must start with your own words. You can't just start by dumping in the quote from Orwell. After that is the citation. It shows where you got your evidence, and your citations are going to look like this, either Orwell 66 or History 7. Um, so if it's from an Orwell book, that's the way it's going to look. History pages get the, the second citation. Analysis explains why the quote is important. That's the interpretation part of your analysis, and how the quote supports your argument. That's the commentary part of your analysis. So usually your analysis is going to be at least two sentences for every piece of evidence that you use. So last year, we did CECA like this. So this would be my topic sentence, which is pretty long and complicated and we'll be developing in class later. Totalitarian governments limit expression through censorship, which violates the right to freedom of opinion and expression, as stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 19. When people are censored, they cannot explore new ideas, eliminating their access to the human enjoyment of intellectual growth. So that's our, our topic claim, our topic sentence that we're going to prove. So now we're going to work through C-E-C-A with our quote. So where do we start? Right, we start with context. So here's our context. In 1984, the citizens of Oceania are constantly monitored to make sure that their words always show their loyalty to the party. So again, our background information for censorship for that quote is that people are always being watched and that people have to, to uh, speak in a way that shows their loyalty to the party. Now we drop in on our evidence with a quote tag. We're not going to start our evidence with the quote. We're going to start it with a quote tag. So it says, for this reason, and now the quote. The most deadly danger was talking in your sleep. Now we move to the C, which is citation. And this is on page 147, so Orwell 147. Now we're going to move to the first sentence of our analysis, which is what? Right, interpretation. So this quote shows that Oceanians are forced to self-censor anti-party ideas even when they are asleep and can never truly say what is on their minds. So that's where I explained why I chose this quote for censorship. I think it shows censorship because they're, they have to keep themselves from even saying them while they're sleeping. So that's a limit on communication. And then our second sentence of analysis is what? It's commentary. So it links back to that, that uh, topic sentence in italics at the top, which is this. In order to remain safe from harm, Oceanians restrict their freedom of expression. So I'm connecting back to freedom of expression, which not only limits the range of ideas, but also limits their ability to be happy. So that's my full round of CECA. That was CECA for last year, and this year we're going to make it more sophisticated as your sophomores. The way that you move your uh, CECA up to sophomore year level is by working with your interpretation. So that's part of your analysis that says why your quote is important. Okay, so the first thing is that we're going to take this quote shows that out. We're going to try to remove that phrase so that we can think more flexibly about where interpretation can go. 
I'm also going to take the underlying section, can never really truly say what is on their minds, and I'm going to try to move some of my interpretation up into my context. So we can move interpretation before the quote, it can be after the quote, it can be woven through your analysis. Interpretation is a really flexible part of your analysis that you can move around now that you're a better writer. So again, I'm going to take this quote shows that out and take can never truly say what is on their minds and move it into the orange part. So here's what this year's CECA will look like. In 1984, the citizens of Oceania are constantly monitored to make sure that their words always show their loyalty to the party. To avoid vaporization, Oceanians learn to say not to say what is truly on their minds. For this reason, the most deadly danger was talking in your sleep. Orwell 147. Even though dreams are supposed to be the place where we are freest to explore our own ideas, Oceanians are forced to self-censor anti-party ideas from their speech, even while sleeping. In order to remain safe from harm, Oceanians restrict their freedom of expression, which not only limits the range of ideas, but also limits their ability to be happy. And that's a round of sophomore CECA. If you need help with this, please come to office hours. Mr. LS and Mr. Sigmund and Ms. Lawson and I are all excited to help you with this. So please come and visit us. Um, happy writing.